Hello once again, I am Jim Ducart with TND How Videos. Today we are in Gent, Kentucky at a coal-fired generating plant. And at this plant, Burns & McDonald has an EPC contract to design and construct a new process water treatment facility. As part of that, they are building a distribution line to power the new treatment facility. And today's task will be setting anchors for 75-foot class H3 pole and a 75-foot class 1 pole on this new distribution line. Our participating utility is Louisville Gas and Electric and Kentucky Utilities, and this video is sponsored by Burns and McDonald. And we will start with an on-site job safety briefing hosted by Groves Construction, the subcontractor on this project. Now we'll listen to a Groves Construction supervisor describe the first type of anchor. All right, this, this is called a bust anchor. And what we'll do is we'll, this will end will go in the ground and then uh, it lays flat. We'll put that buster over top of it and as you hit it, each one of these expand and they go into the soil. And uh, that's one thing that holds it. But also it's, you dig straight down and then you put an angle so you're pulling against all the fresh earth when you fill it back up. So you're just not pulling straight up out of the hole. So, awesome. get ready go ahead, yeah. And then here you see as they put that bust anchor in, using this buster to expand the bottom of it. When it does that, you can tell that it's busted evenly because it busted at one side, that will be like jammed against there. It'll spin freely. It'll be so as they fill in our bust anchor, we'll move to the next anchoring system used on this job. And next we will move to what are called concrete cast in place anchors. And it's important to note that these are being used rather than traditional screw anchors because these holes had to be dug hydro excavated. And that is due to existing utilities in the ground. Again, this is an existing coal fire generation plant. Now let's listen to Tom O'Neill of Burns and McDonald describe these anchors. Good afternoon, my name is Tom O'Neill, I'm with Burns McDonald, and uh, this afternoon we're looking at a couple of uh, anchors that we're installing to support a 70 foot tall distribution pole. And uh, we're doing something a little bit different maybe than what is typically seen. These are cast in place concrete anchors because of some of the conflicting utilities that we were expecting to find. And so here as we watch one of these concrete cast in place anchors being poured, it's important to note once more that these holes were hydro excavated and that is to avoid any conflict with existing utilities in the ground and traditional screw anchors would not be strong enough to support these 75 foot distribution poles. It's definitely not as quick or as inexpensive as the typical helix anchor but in this case, it was the best path forward to manage uh, the, the need to avoid damaging existing facilities and also put in an anchor that would have the integrity to support the poles the way uh, they need to be supported. And now let's move on to our third and final type of anchoring system for this project. Corey Forte of Burns & McDonald explains. On this project, we're using three different types of guy anchors uh, due to the amount of unknown existing facilities uh, and in an effort to minimize impacts to those facilities, we have had to hydro excavate all excavations for this project, including guy anchors and pole locations. As part of that hydro excavation, um, we, that softens the surrounding soil, so we're not able to use the typical screw in anchors that are typically used. Uh, so, here to my right, we have an H beam anchor that is used for uh, a few different reasons, but here, you can see it's cast in concrete uh, from the, the hydro excavated hole. And the second reason we're using this here is to cut down on the lateral distance offset from the pole. Uh, there's an entrance to my left with a lot of active traffic so we cannot have our guy land in the middle of this active driveway. So by using this vertical H-beam guy, it cuts down on that horizontal distance from the pole. It has four hooks at the top. Each one has a 30,000 uh, pound capacity, which is needed for this, uh, for this line here, this, this is a 75 foot class H3 pole, triple circuit configuration and various uh, underbuild telecom attachments that need to be guide. 
due to the size of the poles and the existing conditions that we had to work around, as well as other construction considerations such as schedule, we had to use these three different types of anchors for this project. 